You know, I still remember back in 1998 when I got my first Cisco router and I was eager to get it going. And in the previous videos for What's Next Wednesdays, we've taken a look at some concepts of what is a console port, how to connect to the console port. But now it is time, if you're just starting with Cisco networking and you've got some physical gear, is to get that guy, that networking device connected and actually connect it to the internet. So let me share with you the diagram of the game plan, how I have the connections, and then let's do it together. When a person is gonna bake something or, or prepare a recipe, you have to have the ingredients. So let's take a moment and confirm that we have all the ingredients we need to get a router that we have in our home lab on the internet or give it an IP address. So first of all, we're gonna need a terminal emulator. Now we have a video in What's Next Wednesdays in that playlist about what is a terminal emulator. We also have a video on what is a console cable. I currently have a console cable connected to my computer and to my networking gear. And we're also gonna need an ethernet cable. Now an ethernet cable has several different names. Uh, I've heard it called a patch cable, LAN cable, network cable, uh, ethernet cable. And so I've got that connectivity as well. In fact, let me show you those connections. Let me bring it over to this camera. So this is a, a Cisco router. It's an, it's an oldie but a goodie. It's a 2911 and I have the ethernet port right here. It's labeled right on the port, it's labeled gig zero zero. So I have that plugged in, the, the ethernet cable plugged in from here and I have it plugged into my little home router, a little switch port on my home router. So on your switch port at your, at your house, your device is acting as the access point, the wireless piece, and also the router. It usually has two or three or four available ports and that's what I'm simply plugging into. Those are little mini switch ports on your device. So that's plugged in. I've got the console cable plugged in and we've had previous videos on that. And now I'm gonna use a terminal emulator to connect to that device this router so we can start taking a look at it. This is getting exciting. So to complete this picture, I've got my terminal emulator putty. It's all ready to go. I've got the console cable and the ethernet cable all plugged. In fact, the router looks like this. Here's the 2911 and I'll even color code it. I've got the console port that's plugged into my computer via USB. Fantastic. I've got the what color. I'm using a yellow patch cable and that yellow patch cable. That's <laughs> Hey Keith, that's not yellow. I know, let me fix that. I've got the yellow patch cable, there we go, plugged in there, and that is going to my little router, to the ethernet port on my router. So I've got the router connected to my home router, and I've got the console port that I can now use to manage and work with this device. The other thing I'd have you do, if it's your first networking device, make sure you identify the interface where you're connecting. So in my case, I'm look, just looking physically at it, it's G for gigabit, zero slash zero. Your interface may be FA for fast ethernet and it may be uh, one slash zero or zero slash one. It'll be labeled right on the port. That's gonna be important because what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell that interface to wake up and smell the coffee. And uh, another thing we're gonna do is tell it to, to come up. Like not sit down, don't be shut, bring yourself up. So here's the uh, commands that we're gonna use. And what I'll do is I'll bring up the terminal emulator, Putty. We had a separate video just on that. And let's do this together. In fact, I st <laughs> I'm always excited when a router and its interface come up for the first time and actually communicate to other devices. It's a hoot, so let's do it. All right, so we've covered our first four things. We've got a terminal emulator, Putty, which is right here, a console cable, the ethernet cable, and I've identified the interface as gig zero zero. And one of the most important things right here is to press enter. Once you connect to uh, Putty and you're at the console port, press enter and that wakes up the actual connection. So sometimes we stare, it's like, why isn't it responding? Press enter and that should give us the router prompt. Now, if you're brand new to Cisco, this router prompt uh, it has the default name of router. I am router. We can change that later. It also has this prompt right here, which represents uh, the privilege level that we're currently in. So the greater than symbol basically means that everybody else is greater than you. <laughs> We are at a very low privilege level. That's a great way to remember. It's called user mode. And if we want to configure this router, the first command we're going to issue is enable. And I'm going to do an a enable space and a question mark. And the question mark after we hit the space can give us other options that are available. When we type in enable and just press enter all like by itself, there's no password required by default on new on the gear that's been wiped, its configuration has been wiped. And what this is really doing, it's putting us into privilege level 15 which think of privilege level 15 like King Kong mode. So if we did the command show privilege, and you can also type out part of a command, and if it's unique, you can hit tab, it auto completes for you, so you can see the whole word. And that simply says you're at privilege 15. So we saved a couple steps, we typed in enable instead of enable 15, 
and by default we typed in enable put us in privilege level 15 mode we're going to take a direct path we're going to follow this right here we pressed enter we typed in enable and now we're going to go into configuration mode so if we want to configure it means change this router we're going to type in configure and you can type in part of a command and if it's unique you can tab it out and it'll auto complete that happens on all, a lot of linux operating systems as well and then we have options of okay it says basically you want to configure from where <laughs> and i'm just like we want to tell the router hey I want to configure you from the terminal that I'm currently using to connect to you, which is right here. So that's what we're going to type in, terminal. And what configure space terminal means is I want to configure you, Mr. Router, from this terminal session that I currently have with you for my terminal emulator, buddy. Great. Now we're in this place called global configuration mode. And here we could do global things like change the name on the router. We could set other parameters. But what we want to do we want to go talk to the specific interface, Gig00, and tell it to wake up and start playing ball with the IP network. And to do that, we need to, it's like, think of it like walking into a specific room just for that interface, just for that Gig00 interface. And the way we go into that room, so you, can, you and I can configure just that interface, is we type in interface, which the router gets excited. It's saying, oh, you want to go configure an interface, but which one? If we do a question mark, you know, there's a lot of potential interfaces. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to go into gigabit. And I just typed in GIG and tab and that auto completes. So you can also use shortcuts if you want, but I want to show you the full commands here. Interface gigabit and we want to go to zero slash zero. Now, you might ask the question, Keith, why gig zero zero? And the answer is that's the interface that I have the ethernet cable plugged into. So I have this ethernet cable that's plugged into gig zero zero that's going to my little switch in my home network. So we're now in interface configuration mode on this router and we're almost done. Check this out. So the next thing we're going to do is as we follow this list and also as you come back to this video and you walk through getting your router on the internet for the first time, you can just follow these exact steps and they should be the same for you with the exception of the interface. Uh, if it's fast ethernet or gigabit one slash zero, you have to follow the specific interface for your device. And then the next step as I look here is we're gonna do IP address space DHCP. So we'll type IP address. And now if we wanted to, like if we were like IP address proficionados and we knew the IP addressing and all how to do that, we could actually type in the literal IP address we wanna use. And if you wanna know more about IP addresses, there's a separate video on what is an IP address. And I have a whole playlist on subnetting for IP addresses. But for here, the fastest and quickest way to get this router on the internet is to do this. IP address space DHCP, which is the dynamic host configuration protocol, press enter. And now this interface is going to say, great, once I'm up, it's, it's not up yet. But once I'm turned up, I'm brought up out of shutdown state, I will go ahead and do the whole discover offer request acknowledgement process with the DHCP server on the network and see if I can't get an IP address and a default gateway and a whole bunch of other cool stuff without us having to configure a whole bunch of details. So the last step here, is no shutdown. I once had a dog that I wanted to teach. It was a Cisco dog and I wanted to teach it to stand up. So to teach it to stand up, I issued the command no sit <laughs> and it would stand up. This is how we bring an interface on a Cisco device up. On routers, the interfaces are shut down by default. And to bring it up, we use the command no, as in please don't be shut down. And I'll, I'll, I'll spell that correctly. <laughs> All right, and then once we do this, look at this. Look at the console port. This is the, the console we're looking at. It just is showing us that there's a change. The interface gig zero zero went, is now down. Now it's up, that's great. And what I'm hoping for is I'm hoping for some kind of a message saying it got an IP address. So I'm gonna type in end, which is how you get out of the computer. Yay, party on, party on. So it scrolled it. Let me go ahead and bring it over here a little bit more. Look at this, it got the IP address. It also learned some information about who to forward packets to if it wants to forward packets off the local network. And that all happened via DHCP. And to test this out, so I've typed in end. I'm now at the router prompt. Check this out. Let's do a ping to 8.8.8.8, .8 which is a DNS server for Google. That worked, seemed pretty fast. Let's try, let's try something more interesting. Let's do a trace route out to 8.8.8.8. .8 and that's showing us each of the hops in the path, each of the routers that are being gone through by this router as it forwards packets to my little home router, then to the next router and the next router and the next router until it gets response and hits 8888.
All right, so uh, that's what I wanted to share with you in this video about getting your first IP address up and running and active on your home lab gear. If you are brand new, you can follow these steps verbatim. If you have any questions about, okay, what exactly is a console port and how do I, you know, how do I find it? How do I use a terminal emulator? Those are all separate videos as part of the What's Next Wednesday series here on the Keith Barker channel. All right, so that's it. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next live event or the next premiere. Meanwhile, be well, be happy, and be kind to everybody. Thanks, see you next time.